Hello everyone, my name is Jonathan Eves and I'm a TME in Cisco Systems. This is a Cisco Software Defined Access channel where we share with you all the features and technologies of Software Defined Access solution. SD Access or Software Defined Access provides automated end-to-end -end services such as segmentation, quality of service and analytics for user device and application traffic. SD Access automates user policy so organizations can ensure the appropriate access control and application experience is set for any user or device to any application across the network. This is accomplished with a single network fabric across LAN and wireless LAN which creates a consistent user experience anywhere without compromising on security. And today I'm going to talk about this new 133 feature called Policy Extended Node. So firstly, we're looking at the challenges of the current extended node uh, feature. Um, for one, um, maybe a, a lack of consistency of security policies across IT and OT. Hard to reach IoT switches can cost you know a lot of money to make any manual configuration changes. There's no authentication provided for the IoT endpoints today. And VLAN assignment is handled manually via CLI on the industrial Ethernet devices. And the VLANs are presented to the fabric edge nodes via the via a connected trunk, and segmentation is statically provided by utilizing VLAN to SGT mapping via the IP pool to group assignment in Cisco DNA Center. And SGTs are not assigned on the extended nodes themselves, so east-west traffic on an individual node is not enforced. So introducing policy extended node then, some of the advantages are provisioning and monitoring, managing and security are from a central point, so centralized management. AAA and interface configuration on policy extended nodes um, are automated by Cisco DNA Center. Authentication and authorization of endpoints on the policy extended node um, is done with Identity Services Engine and that assigns the VLAN and SGT. Fabric segmentation to be extended down to the policy extended node so the node provides egress enforcement using SGTs and group-based enforcement, group enforcement is available for intra-platform and inter-platform east-west flows. Um, it's worth noting that this policy extended node is only currently supported on the industrial Ethernet 3400 and 3400H platforms. Okay, just to show the new features then, we have got a new feature on the standard extended node and that is we're implementing MAB and .1x on these access ports such that when endpoints connect they can authenticate with Identity Services Engine and ICE can assign those endpoints into the correct VLAN. So that's a new feature in 133 and it's supported on those devices listed. But the main new feature for 133 is the policy extended node. And how does this work? Well again with MAB and .1x endpoints can authenticate with ICE and ICE can assign them into the right VLAN but also assign them a scalable group tag or an SGT. And this assignment comes back to the policy extended node and as soon as that node knows it's got that new SGT to protect it'll make a request to ICE to download policy to protect that SGT. So policy sits within the policy extended node and does SGT enforcement. And one, also one new thing that's um, provisioned by Cisco DNA Center is CMD tagging with, in the layer 2 frame to carry the SGT from the policy extended node northbound to the edge and also from the edge southbound to the policy extended node. And the next couple of slides show how that works. So there's um, some use cases. So this is a flow from the policy extended node. So when endpoints are connected and authorized and assigned an SGT, when traffic flows from the policy extended node up to the fabric edge and across VXLAN, the SGT is carried in, in line from the policy extended node in the CMD field up to the fabric edge and then is carried across VXLAN to the remote fabric edge where there's egress enforcement. And looking at a flow in the other direction, so inbound from the fabric edge to the policy extended node, again the source SGT from host 2 is carried across VXLAN 
and then it's put into the CMD field and inline tagged from the fabric edge down to the policy extended node and egress enforcement happens at the policy extended node. So these are the new flows and the new enforcement um, flows that you'll see with policy extended node. And showing the final use case where two endpoints are connected to the same policy extended node because policy has been downloaded to this local node then host one communicating to host two can be enforced directly on this policy extended node. So there are three use cases. So let's jump over to Cisco DNA Center and show how this is provisioned onto the fabric. Well for management of the industrial ethernet switches we need some an IP address. So this is normally configured under design and we configure network settings and IP address pools. So this is where we would configure uh, a subnet for use for our campus. And we've got 172.16 um, added here. And then down at the site level, the fabric site, it's called Building 4 in my case, I've reserved some IPs for the extended node, so 172.16.105, so that's been reserved. So that's used for management of our IE device. Now. When we connect our IE device, we want there to be no configuration in it to begin with. So we write erase it, and when we connect it, um, we can go. The device goes into a plug and play so that the Cisco DNA Center can provision it. Um, now I want to show you something in the fabric. So if we go to the fabric, I choose my fabric that I'm going to be adding the extended node, the policy extended node to and go to the site. Now in host onboarding I'm obviously going to connect my policy extended node to a fabric edge. But my fabric edge has had an authentication template already sent to it and it's been sent the open auth template. Now if I had sent the no auth template then I could connect my policy extended node, my IE device, and the required port channel that's needed for connectivity will be automatically provisioned for you. But because my fabric has been configured with OpenAuth, I have to configure my port channel manually. So I'm going to show you how to configure that port channel manually. Remember, if your um, access or fabric edge switch has been configured with no auth, you wouldn't have to go through this setting up the policy, the um, port channel manually. So to give him, configure the port channel, go to your infrastructure. And here's my fabric edge that I'm going to connect my IE device to. And if I click on it, there's this port channel configuration. So I can click on the port channel. And it's already added, and it's already up in my case. But when I added it, just make a note that down the bottom there's an option. When you add your port channel, you can just see it here that it's set for PAGP. So you must choose the PAGP option as opposed to the other two when you add the policy extended node. Now when you've added that, you now need to go over to host onboarding and under the port assignment you find on your edge, you find your port which has been configured for a port channel. Let's scroll down and find our port channel. There's the port channel. You click on it and you assign it to be an, an extended node type. So there's a drop down and you assign the extended node type and save that change. So it now knows it's going to be an extended node. And the final thing you have to do in the provisioning under host onboarding is in your virtual networks you now to need to assign the IP pool that's going to be used for management. Now management is carried out in the underlay so this is done through the infra VN. So if you click on the infra VN you add your IP pool and the pool type is a drop down and you select extended so it's an extended node pool type. So when that's been achieved, the and you connect your policy extended node, remember it's in a write array state, it'll start the plug and play process and it'll do a DHCP and receive an IP address from the DHCP server 
But how does the extended node know to communicate with Cisco DNA Center in order to take place, you know, take part in the PNP process? Well, going back to my slides here, this is an example of a DHCP scope for Linux or Unix systems showing that option 43 is needed to send back to the policy extended node so that it knows where the Cisco DNA Center um, resides. So that is 10.1.150.20 is the IP address of Cisco DNA Center in this example. And you have to also put in the characters as it shows here to indicate that it's the PNP process and also port 80. So that's an example for Linux system. This is another example for Windows. Again, this is done in hex but the same information but in hex and also indicating where Cisco DNA Center is and this is an example of Cisco routers or switches again using option 43 and sending that ASCII information including the Cisco DNA Center IP address so that's how the policy extended node knows where Cisco DNA Center is in order to start the plug and play now, once the plug and play is completed and Cisco DNA Center has configured the policy extended node, you can navigate to devices and plug and play and you can see the discovery and of this device and it's been provisioned and you can click on this IE node and you can see details about it and you can look at the history and configuration. But as well as looking at the configuration there, we can look at CLI. So the first thing we can look at on the policy extended node is to look at the configuration of the inline tagging. So if we do a show run on the interface of gig 110, you can see here that inline tagging has been enabled on the trunk between the policy extended node and the fabric edge. And this is how we carry the SDT for group based policies. And we can also enforce on this platform. So what do we need to enforce? We need to have downloaded a, a pack so we can see if the protected access credential has been downloaded from ICE and it has. We can see if the environment data has been downloaded. This includes the CTS server and the SGTs. And we can see if there are any mappings on here. You know when endpoints connect and ICE assigns an SGT then that will create IP to SGT mappings. So we can have a look at them by looking at um, role based SGT map all. And here there are some mappings on this device, so therefore it may have downloaded policies if there are any policies to download. So let's have a look. We can see show CTS role based permissions, and it has downloaded a policy. So it's it's got mappings, and it's taking place in group based policy enforcement. Now one last thing I want to show you is going back to Cisco DNA Center. Um, if we go to the fabric, choose the fabric where our extended node is connected. And you can see if I scroll down here now, you can see our, our policy extended node. It's got an X here as a device role. And if we go to the topology, you can see I've got my border, my edge, and the policy extended node hanging off the edge. So that completes um, the the demonstration. So I'll finalize with showing some links to some YouTube articles and some links on Cisco communities. And pay particular attention to this one link on Cisco communities. It's the policy extended node configuration guide which I've written to go hand in hand with this video. So that completes the demonstration. Thanks very much for watching.